To you, the youth, what does Youth Month mean? It simply means that the youth of Jamaica must recognize that they have a role to play in national development. Jamaica belongs to every single one of you, and as leaders and policy holders, we hold Jamaica in trust for you. You just stepped into another Youth Month edition of Jamaica Magazine. Thanks for stopping by. In today's show, we highlight how young people with the right support and attitude can become outstanding young men and women of tomorrow. Don't move a muscle. I'll be right back. turn a blind eye to our children. Each of us have the duty to protect them. As we continue to strengthen our protection campaign, we ask that you try positive discipline. Talk not once, twice, three times, seven times even. In talking to your child, you make them comfortable to tell you about what is affecting them. Tell our children the truth and tell them what is wrong and why. We remind our parents, if you, have, if you are having difficulties with your child, we are here for you, to support you, along with the many other agencies that are set up for this purpose. Additionally, we remind parents that if you see another parent in need of help or sound advice, reach out and provide support. Every child is our child. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, November 22. A new cardiology unit at the Kingston Public Hospital was officially opened by Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton on Wednesday. The unit gives patients greater access to vascular services. Over $64 million was spent on the facility, which creates more than a five-fold increase in service capacity. You're moving from 10 patients per week to some 15 patients per day in terms of capacity, not to mention the fact that you will now be in a position to provide uh, modern, minimal invasive procedures. So you have monitors, echocardiogram machines, echocardium, uh, I'm sorry, defibrillators, infusion pumps, and go on and on. The unit was equipped with critical devices such as patient monitors, cardiac stress machines, medical treadmills, and ECG machines where we offer echocardiography, transesophageal echocardiography, treadmill and pharmacological stress testing, and Holter monitoring, which is an extended ECG monitoring. Currently, not all the services have started, but we hope to be fully operational by January 2020. The unit was funded through the Culture, Health, Arts, Sports, and Education Chase Fund. More than 16 individuals and companies have been charged for breaching government's ban on the importation and use of certain single-use plastics and polystyrene containers. The National Environment and Planning Agency, NEPA, says it has intensified enforcement against businesses that have been found in breach of the Natural Resources Conservation Authority Plastic Packaging Materials Prohibition Order. On Wednesday, Dragon Court Limited appeared before the Corporate Area Parish Court for breaching Section 3 of the order. The company was fined $25,000 or 30 days imprisonment at hard labor. Counsel for NEPA Stuart Panton says that, as a general rule, court is a last resort. He points out that the ban has been in effect for almost a year and NEPA has embarked on an extensive public education campaign as well as constant administrative enforcement. But Mr. Panton says there remain persons who are intent on flouting the law and the agency is taking action and will continue to do so. Failure to adhere to the Plastic Packaging Materials Prohibition Order may result in criminal charges being brought. Guilty persons are liable to a maximum fine of $2 million or a term of one-year imprisonment at hard labor. Breaches of the order can be reported to NEPA by calling 876-285-8531, 876-754-7540 or toll-free 888-991-9005 
or email policyonplasticban at nepa.gov.jm. Fifteen young people have been installed as members of the Youth Advisory Council. The members who are drawn from varying levels of society will serve for one year. At Thursday's installation ceremony, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said the youth were a key component of government's national development strategy. Our young people must have a seat at the table and be empowered to contribute to the formation of national development policies and programs and play a major role in shaping the future as this nation adapts to the many challenges which we face. It is important that our youth are engaged so that the outlook of the future reflects the intergenerational vision of what Jamaica should be. The council is chaired by 23-year-old Norman Manley Law School student Kai Bridgewater. The Youth Advisory Council will help to facilitate dialogue between young people and government ministries, departments and agencies. This is the second cohort of the Youth Advisory Council. The previous members were installed in 2016 and served for two years. Wards at the island's three juvenile correctional centers have been recognized for their success in the 2019 Caribbean Secondary Education Certificate CSEC examinations. The award ceremony was held on Tuesday. Teachers and other staff who helped to prepare them were also recognized by the Department of Correctional Services, DCS. Minister of State for National Security, Rudyard Spencer, encouraged the wards to make use of the rehabilitation services being provided. You are now being gifted with the necessary rehabilitation activities to lead you on a different path, allowing you to better reintegrate into society on your release and make a meaningful contribution to your society. Minister Spencer also commended the teachers, probation aftercare officers, medical personnel and caseworkers for their unwavering support to the educational transformation of the wards and the development of the institutions. Fifteen students from the College of Agriculture, Science and Education, CASE, will travel to Israel to pursue an 11-month international program. The CASE students will be engaged in the program at the Ramat Negev International Training Center, which will expose them to advanced technology and training in agriculture. The students who will depart the island next week are pursuing Bachelor of Science degree programs in technology, plant science, animal science, and environmental science. As part of the program, the 15 students will live on different Ramat Negev farms and do studies in 17 courses, including animal science, basic business management skills, computer skills, and Israel's history and culture. At a media briefing on Wednesday, Minister of Industry, Commerce, Agriculture and Fisheries, Audley Shaw, urged the students to take their mission to the Middle Eastern country seriously. He also revealed that next year the program will be targeting 50 students. Jamaica is in need of what you can learn and bring back, appropriate back into Jamaica so that we too can build our levels of productivity in this country. The training is a direct outcome of an initiative by the Economic Growth Council and Minister Shaw, who visited Israel last year and met with their Agriculture and Rural Development Minister. And finally, Entertainment Minister Olivia Grange has congratulated the nominees for the Reggae Grammy album. The nominees were announced on Wednesday. They are Rapture by Coffee, As I Am by Julian Marley, The Final Battle, Sly and Robbie vs. Roots Radix by Sly and Robbie and Roots Radix, Mass Manipulation by Steel Pulse, and More Work to be Done by Third World. Minister Grange says the nominees represent some of the biggest names in reggae music. The Reggae Grammy will be awarded in January 2020. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.
There is a popular saying, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. This simply means that whenever you're faced with challenges or setbacks, you must turn them into something positive, learn from them, and focus on a solution rather than the problem itself. Coming up next is the story of a young man who has excelled as a student at the Jonathan Grant High School despite living with brittle bone disease. For me, I always had to live with the consequence that I may not be able to walk again after a fracture or be the same or basically do things like oh, everyone else does it. My name is Arva McKellop and I have osteogenesis imperfecta, also known as brittle bone. In short, it basically means that your bones are a lot easier to break than a normal person and it makes everyday things more challenging for you. My condition of brittle bone is rather mild compared to others but it's still very serious. Some of the characteristics of my brittle bone is that my sclera is slightly blue and I'm also rather short and I also had bow leg but that was corrected in grade 7. My father has the condition so my family expected that I would also have the condition. Over the years they've rather treated me like a, a member of the family really, no different than anyone else. But despite his family's efforts to protect and shield him, 18-year-old Orville has had his fair share of fractures over the years. So I'm a student at the Jonathan Grant High School and in the seventh grade, uh, my first major accident occurred. I had to do a replacement surgery to replace the pins that were placed in my leg when I was around four. And after that, I, during my time recovering, I tripped and fell and had to, I broke my, my right femur and had to be hospitalized again. It was in the eighth grade when I tripped and fell in a class and broke both my left and right thigh. When you are uh, recovering from a major surgery, it oft you often get lost in boredom. You don't have much to do, so uh, during that time I experimented and graphic design was one of those things I experimented with and over time it just grew into uh, something more than just my hobby. I have very generous friends. I guess you could say, and they're very dedicated, so they, they would come visit me like uh, three times for the week and bring notes to me so I could get them and just to overall just to cheer me up. And when it was time for Orville to return to school, he had the right support and frame of mind to resume his duties as a student. My mom has been my greatest supporter throughout my time recovering and during my exams. She supports me by making sure on a daily basis I have everything I need for school, despite the cost or how hard it might be to get it. I had many friends. Sometimes it would be like a tug of war to see who would carry my bag today, who would carry my crutches today, and really it was more of a race to see who would be able to carry me up the stairs first. I had to take a lot of time out and stop doing many of the things I would doing my extra time and dedicate most of my time towards studying. I mostly study when I get here at school since I live in a rather noisy environment so I rather get here uh, super early so I can study until it's time for classes. Usually I get here by 9 o'clock but my classes start, start at 12.20 to be exact. Fast forward to a few years later when the hard work determination and support of his friends and family have paid off. Orville has emerged as the top student of the graduating class of 2019 at Jonathan Grant High School. I managed to get 10 subjects uh, in the category of four ones and six twos. Uh, I mainly did uh, business subjects and 
visual arts along with the mandatory uh, math, English and IT and three others. Being the top student of the graduating class of 2019 is quite a, <laughs> I wish I could say it was unexpected, but uh, I was being hyped up the entire time by my friends. We were like, yeah, yeah, you're going to get it. <laughs> I'm happy that I got to see him go through his struggles and whatever he had to go through and he still came out on top. He didn't, he fell and he got back up. Arville is a very, he's a very, he's a great person and I am motivated by him because he's, he, he perseveres, he keeps pushing through regardless of his obstacles and that is a great motivator. I am happy that I stuck to him. The aspiring chartered accountant and graphic artist who has received a full scholarship from the school to attend sixth form vows to continue to excel in his future endeavors. I plan on satisfying the requirements of the scholarship by giving him my best off in terms of my academic and extracurricular performances during my, my time here. As it pertains to where I would like to go after a sixth form, I uh, preferably like to go to either the University of the West Indies or UTEC to pursue my career in accounting. I would just like to say thank you to each and everyone that has supported me throughout the years, even in the smallest way possible, because each and every one of you, you and your support, it really does matter to me. In our next feature, we highlight how two schools in Western Jamaica are leading the way in producing an interactive and diverse learning environment for their students. Have you ever heard the term five-star school? Probably not, but I know you've heard the term five-star hotel. Well, like a five-star hotel, a five-star school is one that produces students who excel in academic performance, behavior, and extracurricular activities. And guess what? Right now, we're heading to a school that is aiming towards that very status. It's another episode of School Zone, and we're at the first stop for today, Ultra Rios Primary School. The Five Star concept is to develop the holistic avenue of a child. And so before I get into any detail, let me give you a five-star welcome to Otrias. Our students will do that perfectly. O-R-P-S is our home. O-R-P-S is our home. That is why we never roam. That is why we never roam. A five-star school is what we own. A five-star school is what we own. And now we're in the school zone. And now we're in the school zone. Yes, we're in the school zone. Hope you have enjoyed that welcome, Miss Clark. Yes, I did. Let me go into more details in what are the things that we do here as a five-star school. We have a special ed unit, one of its kind at the primary school. Normally, persons have the unit outside, but at the primary school, where students are catered to individuals. So we have myriads of students with different disabilities, and they're here, they're catered to. Also, we greet our students each morning to let them feel welcome and special and loved. Some of the children want to, to get that early morning hug and to know that they are accepted here. And so we have that here. We also have a mechanic club that engage our boys and girls too are there 
and learning about the different mechanical gadgets that will help them because this will bolster their enthusiasm and having them in going more into that path of mechanic. So it is really that five star wanting them to be holistically developed. Ultra is a stream school, so we have mostly boys and the boys that are not performing academically in the ice bar, I, I mostly take to them. Um, we have a few from the upper class as well, and, but they have to be interested. Um, we try to show them the basic of mechanics and an alternative way of the leave school where they can you know, make an honest living. The course is, is, is a practical course. Um, I bring in all my equipment because I'm a, I'm a trained mechanic. When I leave school in the evening, I go straight to the garage. So I'm a full-time mechanic. Weekends in the evening, that's, that's what I do. Okay, so on the car we have what we call a diagnostic port. And several different cars, there are different places. But you, as you can see here, there are some pictures of some diagnostic ports and cars. It's mostly found under the dashboard. Okay, and as you can see this car here, you see, this is right under the steering. You see, there's a little pocket I just pull down and you'll see the, the connecting port. You see the connecting ports? Okay. There's another outstanding activity that takes place at the school, but instead of telling you about it, let me show you. So just in case you're wondering, what you just saw is the Ultra Wheels Primary Moves program, which is an extension of the Ministry of Health and Wellness's Jamaica Moves. So what happens is that every day, uh, close to lunchtime, students gather in the holding area to do five minutes of physical activity. Interesting, right? I know. Well, right now we're going to be speaking to some of the students of the school who are a part of different clubs and societies and to speak to them about what they think about all of these interesting activities. Let's go right into business. It helps us in our immune system, it boosts it, and in our physical health, give us strong, bone, strong bones to work, play, all sorts of stuff, and to um, work quickly and do good on our work. It feels very wonderful and it helps us to build our singing skills and it brings us many places so that in the future we will be known by our people. I think it's a good club because in the range of the mechanics, we can find good jobs, so we can do good in the future. My favorite thing is the after school activities such as the club meetings, like so I'm in K Kids Club and it helps to build up my skills. I would recommend the Ultras Primary and because we're well educated and as you heard before, we're a five-star school. We're well secured, we're well taken care of. And Thank you so much guys. So as Annalisa said, she would highly recommend the Ultras Primary School because they're well educated and well taken care of. And guess what? The same can be said about students at our next stop. The West End Infant School is the first early childhood institution in Jamaica to be certified by the ECC after just one term in operation. The Early Childhood Commission is an agency within the Ministry of Education 
that coordinates all activities, development plans and programs within the early childhood sector. The Early Childhood Commission is built on 12 standards. These 12 standards are the pillars that governs all early childhood institutions. These are nutrition, health, staffing, administration, finance, parents and stakeholders participation, students interaction, educational and development programs, just to name a few. Upon visitation to your institution, you are given feedback as to where you have reached in meeting the stipulations required by the Early Childhood Commission. This feedback is quantified in percentage. The aim or target is to meet 100% in all standards. At our first inspection, we attained 98%. We started September 4th, 2017, with a total of 46 students. By the end of the academic year, we had 86 students on a roll, 27 of which graduated in our first ceremony. The academic year 2018-2019 started with 84 students on a roll. Currently, we now have 122 students. We cater to students three years and eight months up to six years old. Here at West End Infant School, we cater to the holistic development of our, all our students. Hence, our students are performing at 80% above their level, their developmental level, and 20% are performing at their developmental level. The students here are engaged in academics, extracurricular activities such as drumming, speech. We have received two medals in 2018 for speech at the JCDC competition. Our students are engaged in sign language, dance, and we hope to have swimming and gymnastics on board. The student-teacher ratio here helps with the holistic development of all students in that with a trained teacher and an assistant who is known as a caregiver, the students have one-to-one -one or direct contact. Teachers will do guided learning so students are guided accordingly and they do corporate learning where students are in groups where teachers and caregivers work along with students. So we're back from our visit at West End Infant School and we had a great time. But we have to close the program for today. Right now, I'm joined by Stevel, who has this to say. Did you enjoy the program and want to be a part of School Zone 2? All you have to do is email me at sclark at jis.gov.jm. Until then, take care. Goodbye for now to you, my friend. Goodbye. For now, until we meet again. And just like that, we have arrived at the last page of today's Jamaica Magazine. But don't worry, you can turn the pages with us again tomorrow and every day after. While you wait, visit our website, jis.gov.jm, for daily video uploads and news stories. You may also follow us on all our social media sites for the latest information on government programs and initiatives. I'm Audrey. Have a youthful weekend.
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.